Good evening, good evening, and welcome to Recollage with Pink Girlie. I just looked at the screen and screen and screamed, Miss Barbara, chicken pot pie. Hi. How nice to see you. Oh my goodness. I had to make myself wake up from a nap. I don't know. I just got so tired. I thought, well, I could just rest my eyes for a little bit. Oh, but I didn't want to wake up. <sighs> How you doing, Barbara? Hope you're doing well. I had a good day yesterday with family. Not the whole family, my daughter and her in-laws. And uh, her sister-in-law was there. And my grandson turned five on Saturday. So we celebrated his birthday. Hi, Leah. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Chris. Good evening. So... Calico Kate is back in town. She's back from a wonderful vacation. And I said to her, or she said to me earlier today, what are you up to? What are you doing? And I said, take a guess. Kel, hello. There's Kathy. Kathy, I was just talking about you. And I said, guess. And she said, you're cleaning and organizing. It. Yep. Straightening up my desk. It always looks like a dung heap out here. <clears throat> I get a little area cleaned and then I just, just go crazy, go crazy. So I wasn't going to show um, some things that I <clears throat> got, but eh, I'm a little excited about the one thing. As, as many of you know, <clears throat> of course, now I have a, <clears throat> excuse me, little frog in the throat. I have um, an issue with being enabled. I'm very easily enabled. And uh, I was enabled by Lisa Conway the other day, got a new book. And then I was enabled by CK Art, Colleen, and K Berg. And <laughs> Bragg. <laughs> So this is what Colleen, I, the book is out of my reach. This is what Colleen enabled me. Of course, I'm working on that B journal. So I was particularly enabled. Hey, Ray, good evening. Nice to see you. I had never heard of this uh, company, Dark Room Door. It's a good thing, because let's face it, I mean, I don't need any of this jazz, but I am going to enjoy these for sure. <clears throat> and then Tanya was on with Lisa, and they were, you know, messing around. And Tanya pulls out die cuts. <sighs> How stinking cute are they? Hi, Marty. Good evening. I thought I was going to be able to resist and then she kept, she had them cut. So she kept pulling them out one by one. And when I saw this, this little swirly one that looked like a popsicle kind of lollipop thing. Dang. So as you can see, I haven't cut those yet. Gosh, they look a little bent. Oh, I hope they're going to be all right. Well, now I'll have to inquire about that. And I showed my uh, Keisha haul last time. No, I guess they were right. Gosh, these are tall. Boy, they weren't in that package very well. So, t like Tanya and uh, Lisa, they were saying, you know, she'd had them cut out of paper. And then um, I think Tanya said, oh, you know, painting paper would be good. And I'm thinking, or felt, or fabric, or 
Oh my. So they came very quickly. So I wasn't expecting those to be here by today, but there they are. Of course, Hubby said three packages today. Oops. Oops. Hey, Mitts. So I'm going to be anxious to cut some of those. All right. I'm not going to fuss around with that. And then I think my last stream I was telling you that I was really wanting a, a bundle of um, threads that I could use for tatting. But the one gal that I had made contact with, she um, was not doing so well and it just didn't work out. And uh, I found a fellow on eBay that had a lot of thread and he had some bigger balls it looked like maybe they were um you know like this like um see my mother would call this a crochet this doesn't have the tag on it i don't know if it's actually a crochet but like for um crochet and doilies and i wasn't interested in great big balls i wanted those smaller balls and really um i was interested in variegated thread and i think i told you all in chat that I had him take some off of what he was offering and offered him a price which he agreed upon and I thought it was like 52 balls of thread but it actually turned out to be more so I don't know how many are here I, there's at least 60 so I've got several <clears throat> of this and there's different sizes in this thread that you can use for tatting like this is the number five so this is you know pretty chunky and then the higher the number the smaller the thread gets now some of these aren't marked and then of course there's i'm counting everything so this is like this is a little squashed ball that you know someone obviously is using the tail end of and just squashed the ball and wrapped it i'm counting that as a ball so there may not be you know 60 this is the number eight, so this is a little thinner. And then most of these are number 70s, which is really nice. I was wanting thin, the thinner threads. Like I got, I have quite a few of um, number five and number eight. I think I have a 20 and I have um, maybe an 80, but most of these are 70s. See, I guess this is a 30. So it's, you know, thicker than, you know, thread you would sew a button on with. But some of the variegated ones here. Now, these are supposed to be vintage. You know, I don't know how you would tell that. But look at that yummy orange and yellow and gilded. 59 and 3 quarts. Yes, Barbara. Yes. 70 is tiny. See, this one here is a 70. This little pink number. And like, see, this is a little grungy here. Just, I'll just pull that off because there's so much of it. Um, where is, oh, here. I pulled out one of my hankies that I wanted to try to tat around the edge. So this is a delightful little pink hanky that I'll be able to, you know, tat around the edge or, or try to learn how to tat. So I didn't want anything too heavy. But like I said, the variegated is what I was really, and he had a lot of variegated. Purple. Look at this one. Purple and yellow. Mm, look. See, I don't know if you can tell. See, some of this is a little dodgy, but there's so much on there. You know, I can, I'll just pull some of that off. Baby blue. Baby pink. Here's a nice solid blue, light blue. This one, I guess the cardboard part is gone, but that's kind of like this. But this is the heavier. This is a number eight. 
This is a lighter one, lighter wheat thread. This looks like a number eight. Look at this. This is kind of um. Hey, Dawn. Hi. Who did I miss? Oh, Journey. Hi, Journey. This is like um. The color's not coming on my cameras. I just don't know what to do about the camera. Jumping. This is um. Kind of like a salmon rose color. A light teal. Another red blend. A yellow blend. This is a beautiful red. It's um, a deep red. It's not like a fire engine red. It's a deep red. But I can't see the number of the thread. It's got to be at least a 70. 125 yards. Yeah, it looks like the someone popped a hole through that one. So I'm anxious to uh, start fiddling around with this stuff. Did I say actually say hi to Kathy? I think I said hi to Kathy. I don't want to miss any bunny. Look, there's a deep, deep purple. So Lori is very excited about these. Oh, look at this one. Did I show you that one? <sighs> I'm telling you, girls, so I get sucked in, baby. I am sucked in all the way. So, of course, I don't really uh, know how to tat yet. I'm still learning and um, just not catching on to a few things. I've got to watch some more videos and try to figure out what in tarnations I'm doing. And then most of you are probably familiar with a gal by the name of Katie. Uh, Katie and her tribe of five or something like that. I, I stop in there sometimes and, and shop a little. Oh, okay, Kathy. <laughs> so I got my order from Katie. And of course, I don't write things down. And so I have no idea what's in here. No idea. So, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Do, 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 I have to rearrange things a little bit. I think I have a hard time seeing. All right, I'm moving my... What am I having a problem with? I don't remember what I said. Oh, with tatting, Mitz? Do you tat, Mitz? I'm having a problem with the with um there's one instruction. It's SP. You're supposed to leave a length of thread and then start your tat. And I think I figured out how to do that without it coming loose. Oh, Mitz, maybe we could get together and um you know continuing on and sometimes when i do my like six rings i i can't get them to lay flat you tattoo dawn oh my gosh girls <gasps> and just you know actually figuring out uh, i'm trying to get a figure out like an easy pattern to just do like a strip like i would like to tat around that that um hanky and then I've got some other ideas that I'd like to incorporate the tatting into my current art form, if you will. And um, I can't get my hands to do what my brain wants me to do. And of course, I would like to try the shuttle, but I, I haven't gone there because I don't think I can wrap my brain around it. Okay, I do not remember getting any of this stuff. Oh, that's because this is a thank you. Isn't that sweet? Okay, so... So she's given me some ribbons and some fiber as a thank you, which is very sweet. Thank you, Katie. And then she has some of the bias tape. And this is supposed to be, um, I was really attracted to this one. I never saw bias tape that was, um, 
I sometimes tattle tale. I think that does count, Barbara. You just have to keep count of how many, how many times. And this is white. I don't think I had any white. And I like to iron this out and use it for ties and whatever. So I got those. Some cards. Oh, I think these were cool looking for some reason. Mitzi and Dawn, could I um like maybe message you and maybe we could like do a a private uh, FaceTime thing or something where I could see your hands or you could see my hands and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Dix it. Dix it. I have no idea. I think I just like these images. Oh my. Okay, so they're kind of weird, huh? Kind of cool, but kind of weird. Oh, Dawn, that would be great. You know, sometimes when you want this stuff to stick, it doesn't stick. Like our daughter yesterday said, I have tried all different kinds of saran wrap. I can't ever get it to stick. It said it only sticks to itself. She was trying to wrap some leftovers on a paper plate. I said, yeah, huh? that doesn't work. It doesn't deserve. See, now I don't remember this stuff. Oh, I think she had... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had... See, I have plenty of ribbons. But she... Oh, yeah. She had a variety pack with ribbons. No, let's, no, let's do the old jump. And then I can put it back in here. This is what, yeah. All right, so look at that cool Christmas. Oh, I love that. Purple. Green. It's got strawberries. Some little hearts. Some nice navy robe green. Grow, was it? Grow green? Rose green? Grow green? Oh, okay. Hi, Sharon. Okay, thanks, Dawn. White, looks like white satin. And, hey, that's cool. It's got little stitches around the edge. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, I think that's wired. Maybe that's wired. And then little snowflakes but in uh, pastel colors. That's cute. A wide satin. That's wired. A nice deep teal. Some black. I know I'm not saying that right. I can see it in my head, but I'm not saying it right. Rogaine? Gro no, it's not Rogaine like the hair stuff. Well, maybe somebody will put it in. Barbara will help me put it in chat. I'm saying the ribbon wrong. You know, the kind that's got the line. It ties really nice. Ooh, there's some nice. Ooh, that's nice. Like a nice plaid. Yes, so you could attach the tatted edge to that ribbon. Yes. Yes. I was singing Delta Dawn before we came on. Ooh, sparkle pink. That's always good. A nice medium gray. That's my grow grow game. Okay. Thanks, Mitz. Simply black. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. Look at that pig. There's a cow. A chicken. Thanks, Kill. Oh my gosh, look, that's, see, that whatever I paid right here, it's worth it. 
That is, I've never seen that ribbon. That's gorge. Gorge, 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 gorge. Nice. Oh, empty bag. That's different. It's a gray, red, and black. This is a little Pico ribbon, if you will. Pico, Pico. Oh, that's a nice orange. Some more black. Pink satin. Gold. Oh, Mary would like that. Oh, look at this. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, that is cool. What's the flower you've got on? Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Look at that. Oh, I don't think Katie watches my channel, but Katie, thank you. If you do, that's beautiful too. Of course, now we've got a puzzle on how to get that folded back up. Very nice. The very spring has sprung, huh? Oh, I do love my greens and that lime green. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, it just keeps going. Another nice purple. More of this. This is beautiful. That's a nice Christmas tree to buy the fire kind of a. Ooh, salmon. Baby blue, a nice red. Then we have a velvety touch to it. Look at that. Like a burlap. Oh, see, I love this. Look at that. That's nice. But look at this with the orange and the pink center. I love orange and pink. Beautiful stripe, a nice narrow salmon. Ah, look at this. This is this is like she had flowers in her hair. Do, do, do. I love a flower girl. Oh. I love it. I love it. And then a true green, what I would call a true green, with a beautiful green and pink. Some white. Oh my goodness. I don't think this costs a lot of money. And this is, oh, this is uh, like an equestrian. Can you see it's got horses? Horses, horses, horses. And a beautiful red, like a deep, deep red. Nice. Well, that's a hole and a half right there. I know. Lisa doesn't like the sound of these bags, but I'm a, I'm a little in the sound of these bags. I love it. I love it. All right, let's see what else. Oh, this I purchased not because I need these threads. I don't need these threads. I just got a bunch of those threads. But she said something about pillowcases or something that are in here and I think she may have used the word uh feedback or something like that and that perked my ears right on up right on up doo -doo 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 -doo. I need to I don't need it I, I don't have a staple puller and I don't want to pop a nail I hurried to get my nails done for Easter, so I don't think I put enough glue on all of them. So with this little kit, you got a piece of burlap. Mine is a real light blue, kind of like a robin's egg maybe blue. Oh, and took that in. And then you've got this little stack of threads. 
So I just purchased more of the little um, paper bobbins. And I've been putting my threads on binder rings and then throwing them in a big canning jar. So when I dump them, I don't have to have, um, you know, them all over the place. I, I have them in groups of five or six. And then you got um, a vintage pattern, I believe. If you want to put it on the, you know, the pillow sack. How durable is that? This is a coffee, a coffee break design. Can you see them if I hold them up there? Oh, look, an owl. You can't really see it backwards. I can. Vinegar. Maybe these are tea towels. For some reason, I thought it was pillows, but maybe they're towels. What did Lori do with that? No, okay. And you got two. Oh, they're tea towels. Well, what I would call it. Oh my gosh, they're huge towels. It's like, hold on, it's um, 14. They're 28 inches by, oh, it's square, 28 by 28. 100% cotton. Cool. My husband likes cotton towels for in the kitchen because it they dry up the dishes so nice. You know, it sucks up all the moisture. And if there's one thing I want to do, it's I want to keep my man happy in the kitchen. If you know what I mean. So that's really cool. Okay. I don't know that I will actually stitch these. I might end up tearing them and using them for something else, but I think at least one's going to go in the kitchen. I had some ham for dinner and now I'm, I'm a bit thirsty. This was a bundle. And this has some um, of the uh, vintage postcards. And I think I mostly bought these for the glassine bags, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's a good idea, Dawn. Using them over bread. I'll have to suggest that to the chef. <laughs> I think my bread making days are over as well. Minda likes to mess around in the kitchen. Well, I can't stand for a whole, a whole uh, length of time because of my lower back issues, but I like eating bread, that's for sure. Christmas greetings from Clara, from Mrs. Carrie. No date, isn't that a shame? No date, printed in Germany. This is what Lori wanted, the glassine bags. I'm tremendously attracted to glassine bags. <sighs> what can I tell you? You and carbs are close. You and carbs have a special relationship, I do declare. I'm 
sorry if you hear me gulping. Oh, this was napkins. Okay, this is an adult channel, and they're all adults here. And I'm just going to say this because this is what's in my in my mind. I need another napkin, like I need a third breast. Okay, that's just the way it is. But there were some in here I don't have. And what was the price on four dollars? Four dollars. Okay, I just. I have napkins to spare and to share. Okay, let's do this while I'm going through here. Now, somebody has to remind me. These, I got at quiches. I don't know what I was thinking. This, I, I guess I didn't really see clearly what it was. I'm really not a Frida person. I will never use this. And then this came with it. I, I wanted it when I looked up at the screen quickly. I guess I walked away and then came back. And so I am going to give these away. So tonight I'll do a giveaway, napkins, all right? And I probably will peel them so it's lighter instead of, you know, send you to the whole napkin. But I have some of these to share as well. So let's add one of these, okay? Look at this beautiful one. That, we'll add that one in. Isn't that pretty? Now let's see how many. See now this one you only get the one little thingamajig on there. But you know what? I'm just trying. Well, let me think about that one. Spring is here. Plenty on this one, right? Share that. Now I might end up giving you half of that one. I don't know. We'll see. <gasps> Look at this. How many do we get on this one? Oh, you get two. I probably am not going to use more than two. Oh, look, I got three of these. Okay, so we'll add that one in. All right. I think I might have this one. Now, I want to tear this, so I'm going to give half of this one. See, this one, I probably will need more than one to do a page in my um, in my napkin journal. Marty's getting a lot of calls. I heard you were very popular, Marty. I don't doubt it for a second. All right, so let's add that. I haven't done a giveaway in a little bit. Now this is why I ordered. This is why I ordered the bundle. Right there. There's only one. How cute is that? I'll do. Sorry if this seems stingy. I'm just going to do one square. I can spare a square. I don't want to rip it, rip into that little nesting design. I'm going to leave these right on my keyboard so I remember. Remember, 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 remember. Somebody could nudge me at some point. Lovely's Crafting Lodge. I don't know why I have a hard time. Oh, thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. I was going to say, sometimes it comes to my mind. Other times it just doesn't. Hi, Jacqueline. Nice to see you. We've got a lily. I can share the lily. I'm not sure I would use the lily. Uh, I do love my hydrangeas. Look how many... I do these so I, oh, I can share a whole one of this. Look how pretty this is. Oh, I do like that. I'm telling you, I bought the whole thing because of the bird nest. I hope I didn't miss anybody else coming in. Let's see. 
Yeah, I got several of those hadrianches. Oh, look at this little feller. Look at this little tweeter. I, you know, I think it's supposed to be a bluebird because bluebirds have that rusty belly. Huh? Look at all them I have. I'll share that little tweet and this. Look at these eggs, huh? Look at how many of them. Okay. So that was a good bundle of napkins for four, four smackers. So I know, right, Dawn? Okay. So let's share that. So this is what we're going to share. Love that little bicycle. Okay. That's a pretty hefty lot. Oh, somebody made these. This is uh, Tim Holtz paper. And they stitched it together. I don't know if Katie did it or her mom or she has another little gal with her. Who's the other gal? Maybe Elizabeth? Is, does Elizabeth work with her? Elizabeth, something about I dreamed it up or something? I don't know. I'm never just sitting and watching. I know, right, Barbara? I thought so too. And then something catches my eye and I'm like, oh, geez, I think I missed that. So this, they stitched all the way around and made this pocket. That's a nice stitch. And then filled it with some goodies. Liz someone. Yeah, Liz. Yeah. And I should know her name. It's uh, something about I... I, I dream it or I don't know. Look, little lace hearts, very sweet. A little like chipboard key, key lock thingy. How do you like that key lock thingy? Look, here's a little pocket. This is what I'm gonna do. I think that's a Tim Holtz photo. And these little things I don't want to lose. Look, I don't want to lose that little guy. Just went in there. Oh, I missed. Little embossed oval. Very sweet. Rolodex thingamabobs. I don't have any of these. That's um, photo booth stuff, right? That's Tim Holtz. Fleurs. We've got fleurs. And a crayon. Oh! A, uh, they call this a memo pin. Lovely. Oh, these look like, um, a slide projector or maybe a, um, specimen card. It says it has something imprinted in here. Screen slide. See, mine are square. My dad's, see, they're square. This is rectangle, so that's kind of cool. Got two of those babies, they're nice. Very pretty doily. I think there might be more than one there. A little uh, milk cap. A little photo. This is all Timmy Holt stuff. That's Timmy Holt stuff. Can't go wrong there, huh? Look, bigger card. Oh, that's yummy. <gasps> My gosh, that's very yummy. What is this? Seed type variety. Oh dear. Wouldn't I love to have a bundle of these? 
That's really cool. And some tissue paper with moustaches. So I think that was a very nice, a very nice purchase. Love it. Okay. My stack is getting higher and higher. All right, I don't know what this is. Oh, this is, I didn't need a box. Oh, yeah. And so this was more, this was a lot more. And this was in a box, which I didn't really need the box. I have some issues. I love linens and laces and napkins, not napkins, hankies. Well, not that I don't like a napkin, but you now this, of course, just makes it look very pretty. But if I'm remembering correctly, there was one specific thing in here that I wanted the whole bundle for. But I'm not sad to have the rest. Boy, look at that. My phone just made a noise. Where did I put my phone this time? Mm, I'll look for it in a minute. I just got to make sure there's nothing important. This kind of almost feels like uh, like a hand. I know, isn't it, Barbara? Very pretty. A hand. This was handmade, but I don't know what it's supposed to be a part of. Maybe a table runner. This is real soft, almost like um, what you would knit a scarf. I don't know how people find these things to that and then can sell them. Now you can all hear Keisha saying, I'd be whacking that apart. I'd be cutting that right up, which, you know, uh, this is a very light weight. I guess it's cotton. That's very yummy. I think this was the one. I think this was the one Lori had to have it. <gasps> oh dear. I could cry. Look at it. Look at that open work. I would love to know how they do that. Of course, I never really Googled that to see. Look, <sighs> that takes my breath away. I know. Are you giggling and saying, she's a weirdo? It's all right. It's all right. I'm rummaging through stuff I bought, Ian. How are you, kid? Ugh. This is beauteous. Oh my goodness. This was a sweet bundle. Look at this. Look at the, oh, the gloves. There's gloves. Thanks, Riri. Look at that. Like, what do you call that? I don't know what you call that. This is this is so fine. She's so fine. Do, do, do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't feel like crochet. 
It's got a little bit of a stretch to it. It's nicely grunged. But you know what? The stitches are so... I, I don't see any picots. So I'm, I'm going to say this is crocheted. Hi, Stacy. Good evening. Ange, I know I spoke to you, but I don't know if I actually said hello. Hello. Hello, Ange. And then everybody, she, I don't know how many bundles she's had, but everybody had, everybody that got a bundle got a pair of gloves. These look like this. My old fat mitt's not going to fit in here. These, these gloves were worn and used. And they're long. Oh, I would love to get my fat hand in there. Let's see. Let's see. I don't think I can do it. It doesn't feel like there's too much give. Oh. Okay, so now we got to lose weight so my fat mitt will fit into this glove. I'm set with my uncle. Oh, I'm sitting with my uncle's mother and had to get her out of bed. Now my hand. Oh, I guess it is, Ange. Got any ice there, hon? You can put some ice on it. Boy, almost. See if there was a little bit of give. Oh my gosh, I love them. Love them, love them. That's a beautiful piece. This looks like a pair of underwears. No, really, doesn't that look like underwear? Come on, huh? It does. Pretty. Very pretty. Oh, here comes my, my plastic bag. I forgot to say, if you're new here, you could just scroll ahead. <laughs> I would say in most cases, right, if if there's no pico, although that looks right there, that looks like a tatting, like a chain. Beautiful. And then my head just keeps spinning. You would wear them for. Good move, Ange. Good evening, Janice. Nice to see you. Yeah, there you go. Janice says, grab, grab a bag of frozen veg and put it on your on your hand. Very nice. And this little number. Love it. So that was my my Katie's Tribe of Five hole. So I have got to be good for, hey, Joyce, good evening. I was being good there for, I mean, I'm better than I was. But I've not been good, good. But, you know, something like this, you're not going to see, you know, you're not going to see it again. Of course, I'm probably not going to remember it again either. But I'm glad I have it, especially for that one piece. Just that one piece alone. All right, I'm going to tie this back up. So a lot of us follow and um, travel in the same uh, group of artisans. And many of you are familiar with... Um, Oh, she just changed her name. It used to be Aunt Beck's Creations. And now I know if it's, if it's Beck's Creations or Becky's Creations. But she's been crocheting baskets. And uh, quite frankly, I'm a knitter at heart. But I do crochet. I don't mind crocheting. 
Uh, for the most part, I like how knitted things look better for my taste. Um, I don't, you know what, maybe I'll just put these napkins in here for now. And, um, and then Shannon was uh, knitting bats. Shannon has started crocheting and she has been going a uh, humming. That's, um, art junkie. Shannon is, uh, art junkie. And so I had some gray yarn that I was fiddling around with. I had some end pieces and um, another video came across and I started to watch some of Aunt Beck's or Becky's um, video on crochet in a basket. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just have a try at that. And so I posted on Instagram. Some of you may have seen it. I've already got stuff in it. So this was my first try at a crocheted basket. Now, I didn't use Aunt Bex, um Hey, Brenda, hi. I, um, oh, <laughs> well, it's hard to break a habit. You know, we'll get used to just Becky. Um, I didn't use her pattern, uh, quite frankly, because she does a, an extra stitch here and had a line down the center. Now you can see a little bit of line, but hers was a little more pronounced. And um, I, I just, that just wasn't for me. And so I miss Johnny as a machine. Oh, Brenda said, I ordered Masonite boards from Johnny on Saturday and they were in the mail. Oh. Oh, she ships quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those nice night boards are cool. I have my husband cut me some of those. Of course, you know, they're still sitting on my shelf. And um, so I found a pattern that was called waistcoat uh, basket, crocheted basket. And I couldn't figure it out initially. So the bottom half is just a regular single crochets. And then this part here is the waistcoat. I think I finally figured it out. And a reverse single crochet. I have been crocheting since probably about age eight or nine. Never heard of either one of those. Now, like I said, I'm not a diehard crocheter. I'm a knitter at heart. Um, but I, kids, I'm old, you know. So I never really heard of those two stitches. So, but I like them. So I not only made a basket, I learned two new stitches, or at least I think I learned two new stitches. And I'm well pleased with this. Now it could be a little stiffer, but it's just it's just with, with regular yarn. Okay. So then of course I got looking at different patterns. And I came across a gal, I believe her name is Verena. I have my have her link in the description box for this live. And uh, gosh, I didn't even get a chance. I was busy napping. I didn't even get a chance to make my thumbnail for tonight. So what Verena does is she takes fabric and she actually it's it's jeans i think she called something it's called something like blue jeans into a basket or something like that and so she takes a pair of blue jeans and she cuts them and she's just using the legs okay thanks Ange. keisha's coming on at 5 30 on wednesday that's always good to know thanks Ange. and um she just tears the fabric in one inch strips. Now, I have some issues with, um, I'm dyslexic with numbers. And I do better if I watch somebody do something and tell, tell me how to do it while I'm watching them. Some gals do what they call the premier um, type videos where they record their video and then they're well they're watching it and telling you what they're doing but they're in the chat live um yeah well it depends some some of the gene is a little 
a little lighter weight, but I get what you're saying, uh, Janice. It is a little harder to tear, but I have a hard time um, cutting that much and rolling that little wheelie thing. Number one, I don't go straight and I have hard, I have issues with my arms. Um, it's easier for me to tear than press down on something. So you got to do what works for you if you're if you're going to try this for sure. Um, I didn't try the jeans because I don't have a whole pair of jeans to tear apart or cut. And um, but what she was using was some thread, like a crochet type um, doily thread or tatting thread, if you will, fabric. And she had a, um, a large eyed needle and a crochet hook. And so she tore her strips. Now, some of you may have watched Lizzie Brewer at some point. Oh, she was tearing um, t-shirt fabric. Yeah, yeah, jean, tearing jeans is hard. For sure. I have some lighter weight jeans. So like if you're going to go to Goodwill and, and look for a pair of jeans to tear apart, you know, sometimes the jean fabric is a little like a summer weight. You know, just something to keep in mind if you're going to go that route. But I decided to try what I'm going to show you, what I hope I'm going to show you this evening uh, with some different fabrics. So this is just some kind of, I don't know some cute print fabric that I have, right? And Lizzie and this Galvarina, so say you had, say this was a pant leg. I just got this here. I'm going to cut this here. And, um, and I'm going to just, this is just for, um, just showing you, I'm not doing this because I didn't think it, it didn't really make sense to me. But what this gal did was she cut her jeans, then she tore it, and she tore it up to the very end. Or you could cut it, you know, if you desire to cut, right? And then you leave that attached there. And then you come back down. Uh, see if I do it correctly. See, because I didn't do this. Then I think you snip it here. Yeah, then you snip it here and you tear to just to the very end. So, in essence, you have one continuous piece of fabric. You know, and then they. Lizzie would take the t-shirt fabric and roll it up, right? Now, when Verena used her fabric like this, and when she got to this place, she would give you two options to then fold your fabric this, this away. I think she, uh, hold on, Marty, I'll get it. Somehow she folded this where it's like, I don't know how she did it, but she gave you an option where you could fold all this fabric in and use it as one piece, or you could use it as two pieces, just have individual strips, and then she shows you how to overlap. So I hope that's not confusing, but I'll tell you when we, we, when we get going. I'm not giving you... Yeah, see, I don't even, see, a 90 degree angle makes no sense to me. Anyway, I know you're trying to be helpful, but Lori just doesn't get it. So what you're going to need, if you're going to try this process, and I don't even know what this is called, because she just called it jeans to a basket or something like that. I don't, I don't know. So I spent the afternoon trying to work up what she was doing. The other thing you need is you're going to need a small, sturdy tube. She uses the center of, if you've got any like doggy waist bags, it's a nice size one. My husband said, oh no, there's no center in those. Yeah, there is. So Lori dug that out. She also says a straw. 
but I, a straw would be really small and have to be pretty sturdy. So what I did was first I took this fabric that I showed you that we I just did that demonstration with and tore inch strips. Yeah, she yeah, she tears the denim. But just remember there are different weights of denim. Don't get hung up on the tearing. You can cut it, but I'm I'm using there are some fat straws. A straw from bubble tea might work. I don't know what that is, but yeah, if you can get so I don't know if you can really see this. I'm gonna take this. Can I take this one off? Let me see if I can take this one off. Yeah, so you can see the Oh. And this just, you know, you don't need this. You'll see when I get started. This is helpful, but don't let this be a stopping point for you to try it if you want to try this. But you'll you'll see in a minute. So this is a lighter weight fabric than the jeans, but I want to tell you that once she got going, I think the weight of the jean makes a nicer, sturdier basket, of course, because it's sturdier fabric, right? So I prepared this and then I started to, I started this one first. Um, this was, this is really very thin. And so I started this basket. And I wasn't, I wasn't liking how this was going. And then I pulled out some, which I, I don't know if this is true ticking, but this is just little strips of fabric that I had in my, in my um, fabric stash, if you will. And I'm getting on another ball of thread. And then I started this one. Okay. And I was hoping to have more of this done, but I had to have a nap. I had to have a nap. Okay. I just, I couldn't keep my eyes open. So I'm going to start from the beginning and I'm going to use this fabric. So what I did was I just, I cut strips of this fabric one inch wide. And what Verena does now, hers was all connected. And she cuts it like Lizzie Brewer would cut uh, t-shirts, old t-shirts to make t-shirt yarn. And then she took her, Verena took her little tube and inserted her fabric in the little tube. And she says that it helps keep this folded while you're working with the fabric. Now, my point is with Verena's video, she does not do, um, she did not record and then speak the instructions. So I'm trying to watch her and then their instructions are written at the bottom of the screen. That's for someone like me, that's very difficult. So. It's very interesting what she does. And of course, hers is beautiful when she's finished. So like I said, I've got the link that will be in my description box. I already pasted it in so I wouldn't forget. And then you're going to need a crochet hook. I don't know that she told us what size crochet hook, but it's a metal hook. This one worked good for me earlier. This is a size one. I don't know if any of you are familiar with these. To me, these are old timey metal crochet hooks. This is what my mom always used to make her doilies. And then I'm just using this ball of what my mom would also call Ecrochine. I don't know if that's a brand or if it was a color, but it's just um, like doily weight uh, crochet thread. All right. And then you're going to need a large, 
eyed needle to put your thread through. So she slips her fabric. Now she also says in her instructions, if you care about your basket being uh, very neat, and not have a frayed look at all, you want to keep your fabric where, you know, you're keeping it folded in. Like I folded my edges in and it's kind of, I'm kind of making a fabric rope. So, did I lose you? Marty, are you lost? Are you okay so far? So, well, let's see if Lori can do it. Now, I don't think I'll get the basket made tonight because Lori's not that quick. And I wanted to try a couple of other things because as I was doing this earlier, I got a couple other ideas. All right, so Verena goes into her, into her fabric. I've made jelly roll quilts and did all the pieces end to end and sew them together with a 90 degree. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's how they do like the sari silk. Like if you look at some sari silks, the way that they're put together on those little rolls. You're always lost, Ange. Okay, as long as you know how to get to the Mexican restaurant, you're okay. All right, so I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to put a knot in the end of this. I'm going to double. I'm going to double the knot and then I'm taking my needle off and I'm putting that up on my little magnet. I don't need that thread to be too terribly long. And what Verena does, our new friend Verena does. Okay, Barbara, thanks for coming. Hi, Candy. You have a good week, my dear. Okay, so I'm going to take my short end and kind of bury that down the center of my fabric, fold that back up. And then she says, if you keep this little tube up close to you, it will help you. Now, see, I've got some fringy stuff there. I'm really not, I'm not really concerned about this looking rat-a-tat or fringy. I just wanna try to, um, see if you know get it going and seeing if I can get it to work all right so I've got my thread now attached to the end of my fabric and I am going to wrap that around my index finger on my left hand because I'm right-handed and I'm going to take my crochet hook I'm going to try to keep my hands as close to my camera as I can without you seeing my dirty sweatshirt that I'm wearing And I'm going to take that thread, I'm pulling it under my piece of fabric. I'm going to grab a piece of thread, you know, right, like a yarn over, and pull it up. That's going to be my first stitch. And then I'm going to do a chain stitch. Now you want to get this as tight around the fabric as you can. Now, if you have questions for me, please put it in caps which would be great. Mara, Janice said, yep, I like weaving a rug, big rope for me. And I saw a couple easier ways to weave rugs and baskets, but I'm not worried about neatness. I like wonky. Yeah, wonky is um, cute for sure. So then you just take your hook, come underneath, grab your crochet thread, Wrap it over, yarn over, and pull it through your two loops. Pull it down as tight as you can, and then do a single chain stitch. And I want to do this six times, she says. So you don't want to grab your yarn from here, your thread from here. You want to go under your piece of fabric, pull it up. You want to pull that loop up. I believe to that top edge of your fabric. Now it gets easier once you get started. 
pull that tight and do your single chain stitch. All right. Back under, grab your thread, pull up that loop, over, yarn over, or thread over, pull it through your two loops, that's your single crochet, and then your chain stitch. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, I need one more. Underneath your fabric, yarn over. Pull your loop up, you know, so you have the top of your, at the top of your fabric. Pull it through both of those loops. Pull it down tight. And then a single chain. All right. Then she pulled the big loop. And this is what you have. Now, this is where it gets fiddly. Once you get past this part. It's not so bad until you try to get the sides of your basket to come up, which I don't know how I'm going to make out doing that. All right. So now she wants you to start your coil to be the center here. Now, if you were crocheting this with just yarn, you would do your magic ring or your magic circle and you would take your threads and pull that and that cinches that up and tightens that up and uh, becky mcgauley has a video and she shows you how to do that and of course there's plenty of videos on youtube but we're trying to do this with fabric not just you know crocheting material so <clears throat> you want the stitches these top stitches to be on the outside of your circle for your coil. So you're going to wrap this as tight as you can. Tuck that in. And Verena's instructions are that your last stitch should come right after your first stitch when you make this little coil. Now you don't want any hole there. I didn't have a problem the first time. The second time I had a bit of a problem. So I don't know how this is going to go. Of course I can pull it out. So you want to you want to make sure you get your crochet hook in there. Oh stinkers. Wait, I don't want to drop my, my little coil. So you want to hold that as tight as you can. And you're going to really cinch this thread. Because you want it all to be tight. Tight, tight, tight. And then you're going to go in what she calls the bridge of that stitch, which I'm sure she means that single chain stitch that I did. All right. This is where it gets fiddly. Now I'm trying to think, you know, if I, I could really, I could really stitch that right there. And I may cheat and do that at some point. You know, I've left to come undone. She's come undone. I'm getting it. I'm getting a twisted sister. I'm getting a twisted sister. Now, you can imagine with jean fabric, this is really going to be hard to do. So I'm going to come under that bridge, that stitch that I made on top, under my fabric, grab my thread, bring it up to the top, try to get my fabric to be flat, 
keep my thread tight, yarn over, come through those two stitches, and then do my single chain stitch. Now, just like when you are, hey, Teresa, <laughs> you'd get Gorilla Glow. That's an idea. Um, just like when you are increasing and you're going and using um, yarn and you're doing a crocheted basket, you put two stitches in each stitch you have because you're increasing. So I'm going to go in that space a second time. Make sure I get under that stitch. Grab my thread, pull up my loop. So I've got two come through and then do my single chain stitch all the while. Now, supposedly this tube, you know, you keep that up close there. That's supposed to help keep your fabric kind of in a rope or folded. And I was wondering if I could just twist, twist that fabric. But I think once you get going, you can do whatever you want. All right. So I'm coming back under that next bridge, pulling up my stitch. Yarn over, come through, and a single stitch. I'm going to do that again, right back in there, under that little bridge, pull up my crochet thread, up to the top of my fabric. Now you can see I got a big gaping hole there. And a single. So you can see on this one, I have a little bit of a hole. The first one I did, I did really good, but I think it was because the fabric's more pliable. That one, there's really not a hole. Now, I'm gonna redo this just because I can. Now I don't want to do I don't want to redo my first six stitches. I'm just gonna redo this. So I've got one, two, three, four. I think I lost one here. So let's do this again. Yeah, but once you get going, it's really cool. Now, I got this thread I'm supposed to be burying, too, but I'm not going to worry about that. I can snip. I can snip it. I'm coming underneath of my fabric rope. I'm going to yarn over, pull my loop up. I'm going to snip it now, get rid of it, because I think it might be confusing if you're watching. I've got my yarn over. I'm pulling through those two loops, and I'm doing a single chain stitch. Now I'm going to try to coil again. Now, if I don't do it right this time, I'm just going to move on, just going to move on. You can use the same technique with rope. Well, that's what I was going to try, Stace. That's what I was thinking earlier when I was doing it. I got my rope sitting right here. All right, so I'm going to hold that. This is when another set of hands would come in handy. Tension is everything. It's so tense. So I'm going in that bridge, grabbing my thread, bringing it up. Coming through my two loops and a single chain stitch. I'm going back in that same spot because I want two 
in that space. I still have a, a big gaping hole. And it might tighten up. Now coming around, I'm going to grab that little bridge that I made. Grabbing that thread, pulling it through, pulling up my loop. Well, I'm still keeping tension here. Yeah, I have yarn too. Ten years later, Maury says, look, I made a rat. <laughs> and it just repeats. Of course, I didn't bring a bigger, oh, I didn't bring a bigger, I have to find a bigger crochet hook to do the other. I know I have crochet hooks out here. It's just where do I have them? That's, that's the rub. Now I'm going into the next. What, they, what she calls a bridge. It's bridge over very troubled water. Well, that's true. And you can always put a bottom in your basket. Don't, don't think I haven't thought about that. Under my fabric rope, pulling it through. Pulling up my loops, draw through both, single. It's not a single, it's a chain stitch. Go back in there. I'm going to put, because I'm putting two. You'll have to watch Verena and tell me what you think. Now see this little tuby thing supposed to help keep my fabric. But somehow I got that twisted, but that's all right. My split nail is on the bottom. I'm coming back under my bridge. And I'm giving that a yank, pulling up my loops, pulling through, and a single chain. And I'm going to go back in there. So that's how you start it. Now, see, I've got all these different ones because I wanted to be able to show you starting it. So this is the one that I was doing earlier that I was a little more successful. Right. Yeah, well, I think anybody could whip one of these up in no time once you get the hang of it. So now here you can see. better. I want to go in that bridge, grab my thread, pull it up through my two loops and a chain stitch back down in there. And you just keep moving along. They move your tube. Now she really took care to fold her thread. I, her uh, fabric, I kind of just twisted mine. I'm not really care about it being a little rough on the edges because actually I think that you know would look cuter actually with a little fluffy fridgy fridginess fringiness here and there but you can keep you know um, tucking your 
your fabric and folding and all that jazz as you go. You know, you can stop. Refold your fabric. Try not to grab, you know, your other project in the meantime, because you have too many things on your desk. And if nothing else, if you need a reason for a drink, No, the stripes, the strips are not sewn together. She cut them like Lizzie cut, would cut a t-shirt fabric to make it all one. But I'm going to show you. She gives you two options to do. And I'm going to give you the second option. I cut individual strips. My strips are not connected. So as you move along, you continue to increase your circle. You know, you come down and you start using up your fabric and you're coming to your next piece of fabric you want to use if you did it like I'm doing it. What you do is you just overlap your fabric. See the way that some of the, the other way she does it where your fabric would be attached here. And then she does the 90. Hun, show me a 90 degree angle. Oh, that doesn't help me. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Or if I have fabric like this, though, how do I turn my, some, you turn it to your fabrics, I guess, this way. And it's attached. And then she folds it in and she trims and all that jazz. See, I can't be bothered with that. So I did separate strips. The second way she told you is you just overlap them. And then you roll your fabric as tight as you can. And then as you're as you're crocheting and you, you're coming down, you know, you're using up all this fabric. All right. That goes in your little tube. And then when it comes out the other end, you stitch it and it, and it joins. Of course, I'm, I'm yanking it and it's coming apart. But you stitch it. And then when you are crocheting around it, it all it joins together and you just do a really tight join. You can put a little bit of glue in there. You could tack that. But the thing I didn't like about it, if, it, if the fabric was connected, like where did I throw that piece of fabric I showed you initially? If the fabric is connected and it's all one, it's very thick where it joins and I didn't want I didn't want that thickness see I never pay attention to where when, once I'm finished with something I don't know I guess I just toss it did I put it in my basket no so I just didn't want that added thickness so then when I'm working on this and I'm thinking oh yeah yeah this looks really cool as she comes around here you just start leaning your fabric rope as you're crocheting and you start bringing your sides up and that's how it makes your basket so then i was thinking well you could use rope or why couldn't you use yarn stacy said there is another way by cutting a slit in each and knotting them together. Yeah, but then if you have a knot there, wouldn't that make a bump in your basket? I got a bump in my basket. Dear mother, dear mother. Okay, so I bought this stuff a while back. I think it was down at the shore and maybe it was a... Um, 
I think it was like in a seasonal room. I don't know. It's it looks like yarn. It kind of feels like yarn, but it's real. It's not soft. It's real br kind of bristly. And I try to stitch a bowl like like Ange makes. Ange wraps hers. Ange, do you wrap your your bowl stuff around a rope, or do you just do? Okay, Jana said the bump wouldn't really be that noticeable. Just use enough yardage to minimize the connections. Yeah, and Farina, she trimmed some of that away. Um, so I like making bowls like Ange does, but with rope. And I tried, I did make a bowl with this, but it's real, it's real flimsy. But I thought it might look cool using this technique. Now, I don't know that I need it to go through because this is stiff enough. I don't know that I need it to go through this little tubey thing, right? The only problem with this is, you know, the end being so, um, you know, I've been playing with it. It's, it's getting all frayed. So I haven't tried this, of course. So I just, I'm just willing to... Oh, I don't need a thicker because I'm still using this. I look for any opportunity to embarrass myself on YouTube. So here we go. So I've got my crochet thread. Now, what I'm thinking about the end, of course, you could probably melt this. You could put a little tape on here. Okay. Uh... I was thinking about some kind of a a wrap. Like just wrapping the end. Hmm? Okay. Thanks, Marty. Have a good night. Okay, so I'm going to try it. I'm wrapping that around my finger. Where's Kellyanne? Kellyanne, are you trying this? I'm going to take my hook under my fabric and crochet on and then do a single stitch. I'm going to come under my yarn, grab and pull up a stitch, yarn over, pull through both stitches and do a single stitch. Back under. Pull through both loops. I'm pulling that down as tight as I can. And then a single stitch. Yeah, I was going to scoot them down. Stace, thanks. I'm just going to try to scoot that down. Yarn under, I mean, under my yarn, pull up my loops, draw through, chain stitch. This gives me four. Just watching? Okay. I was wondering if you were ripping your hair out. I gave up on my dust bunnies. At least I didn't give them to my grands because I was I wasn't feeling like I wanted to take any uh teasing from my son in law. Okay, draw through, chain stitch. I guess I count that one. One, two, three, four, five. Back under. Bring this up, draw through both loops, and a single chain. So it kind of looks like a worm. So I've got one, two, three, four. See, that only gives me five. I guess I could use maybe this one here as a bridge. One two, three, four, five. Okay, let's try that. All right, so now I'm going to keep that on the outside edge. 
And I'm going to coil this in. And she said, you know what, I think I might make another one because see, I've wrapped the end of that thread. And the one thing that Verena said was your last stitch should uh, meet up with your first stitch. So I'm going to do another one here. So I'm coming under my yarn. I'm trying to keep those closer, like Cece said. And do my single. All right, so now let's try this. That might be that might be more better. Now let's see if I can get it to work. Unwind some of my crochet thread. The thing with making the crochet baskets with the, like the triple yarn and then the big hooks, my goodness, that's really hard on your hands. It's hard on my hand anyway. All right, so now I'm going to go in this bridge underneath, if I can do it. I've got it really tight. Wah! Trying not to stick my tongue out. All right, grabbing that thread from under my yarn, pulling up my loop. I'm trying to keep this as tightly wound. Oh, she's wound so tight. Trying to yarn over with my hook going in the right direction. And then a single. I'm going to put another one in that same spot. Bring up my loop and a single. And now I'm coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeah. See, it keeps slipping down. So I'm going to go and grab that bridge from under there. I'm still under my yarn, pulling it up. Doing a single, going back in that same spot. She's Marina says to double up. Uh, my hands are hurting. Oh, okay, honey. Bring it closer, even. Yeah, it's hard there on the end, Stace, because my uh, stitches on on the last row were under, were wider apart. Uh, fiddly, especially if it needs to be tight. Yeah. All right, so I'm looking for the next bridge, which is down here. I want to grab my thread. Okay, going back, going back to the scene of the crime. Pulling that up.
And then I'm gonna find the next bridge, which I believe is there. I'm still under my yarn. Pulling up that loop, coming through two loops and then a single. I mean, a, uh, a chain stitch. It's not a single. I keep saying it's single. The closer the stitches, the tighter the join, the stiffer it will be. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, it's just like when you're first learning how to do anything, right? Especially uh, knitting, like knitting with two needles or crocheting. You know, and you have to find your comfort zone of how to hold your needle or your hook. All right. The next. And then my chain stitch. I'm going back in that same spot. Pulling up my two loops coming through and my chain stitch. And then as I'm coming around, I'm just, co it's just coiling. Back into the next bridge. Pulling that stitch up. Going back in that spot. Now, because this is thicker than the fabric I was doing, you know, I'm going to have to go around a couple of times to make a nice bottom for the basket. I just have to keep saying to myself to go under, whether it's the fabric or the yarn so that I'm making sure I'm catching that, you know, and I'm stitching it in. And I it's I'm trying to keep it tight so and to pull up those uh, two loops on the top side of my coil. And I am trying to keep them as close as I can, which is not easy. And I'm hanging over my desk and I got my neck in a crook. You know, all that there stuff. Oh, Cal, isn't that the truth? I'm so with you on that one, girl. Nothing like a nice bottom. All right, under the bridge. And pull up the loop. Do 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 do. So it almost kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a snail or something to me. I don't want to pull it so tight. See, I'm going to have to add extra little stitches in that little thing there. So it doesn't look like a uh, an Audi belly button. Okay, so my grandson just turned five on Saturday. And uh, they surprised him. Okay, Kath is going to bed. Oh. Yes, Kath just got back from vacation. And you know how all that is and catching up and all that jazz. Thanks for coming in, Kathy. Uh, look for Kathy tomorrow morning if she feels 
feels up to it, she'll do her live tomorrow. It's 10 Eastern, right, Kath? And um, they took them to Chuck E. Cheese, which was a surprise. It's a place around here. I don't know if everybody has those. You get pizza and play games and stuff. I think they went to Wendy's for lunch. I don't know if they went to a park. They watched movies. You know, he, he had a great day. So then we were celebrating um, with the rest of our family and, you know, his dad's family, his birthday on Easter Sunday. So taking stuff for the kids for Easter. And then he had birthday presents to open. And um, we'd had our meal around two in the afternoon. And then... Um, our daughter said around five, well, is anybody ready for cake or do you want to have something more to eat, like some more ham or. And after we had eaten at two o'clock, Colleen realized that she hadn't uh, fixed up the deviled eggs. We were going to have deviled eggs with our meal. And I did. I didn't miss them. I didn't remember. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to have some food. I'd like to have some food. And everybody else, oh, sorry, I hit the camera. Everybody else wanted cake. So they're all eating cake. I got some ham, a little bit of salad, and uh, some pineapple stuffing we had. And um, our daughter said, oh, well, I'm just going to make those deviled eggs. The eggs were all cooked and peeled. And I said, well, I could just eat a, a hard-boiled egg. That's fine with me. And she said, you know what, Andrew, who's her husband, he likes them. And Jack, the birthday boy, he likes them. And it doesn't take long to make them. I'll just, I'll just quickly throw them together. Now, Jack had had a piece of cake and a brownie. And his mom got done making the deviled eggs. And he said, Mom, can I have a deviled egg? She said, sure, you can have a deviled egg. And he said, oh, this day just keeps getting better. <laughs> deviled egg, okay? All right, so let me just continue around here a couple more times. Let's see. I wanted to try and see if I can get the next step. Now, if you are interested in this and I mean it really is fun to watch uh, the Verena's uh, video that she has it just for me I had to watch it a couple of times because I'm trying to watch what she's doing and then read the instructions that she has on the screen and uh, most of you probably will not have the same difficulty that I had But you really can't even tell that much that it's blue jeans because of all the, the stitching with the crocheting. But it is, a, and she did a very small basket, which, you know, I'm sure she edited her film and, you know, she speeded it up a little bit so she could get one finished. Well... You know, there's a way you can edit it, I guess. It didn't, it, whatever she did, she it looks really nicely edited. It, it, I couldn't really tell that much. But she finishes in just a little basket. But then she does show you that she has different baskets with different five, you know, different fabrics and stuff. The one thing that she said, she said, just double up where needed. I don't really know what she meant by that. But, you know, this is a different spot. Okay.
So really, once you get past that very, very center coil, you know, probably increase stitches as it gets larger. Okay. Okay, Janice. Ange says, woohoo, I'm home, and now I'm going to open my pack. Oh, nice, Ange. Now, when you make the bowls on the sewing machine, as you come around and you want to start your sides, you kind of just start leaning it and stitching. Now that I'm having trouble with my sewing machine, um, I think it's a tension thing. Some, some of my baskets turn out fine. I go to do a second basket and then I'm having troubles. She meant, uh, Stacey said she meant cut or something to tension if you need more room to get around, do an extra set of single crochets. Okay. Just guessing that double up means, yeah. I know that double up means extra stitches, but I'm not sure why. Because it seems like, at least so far, you know. I mean, I've been putting two in because that's, you increase when you crochet the basket you know, that, that uh, like the regular, you know, normal way. Just trying to keep that top, the stitch around, you know, the top of the yarn here. So, Candy, are you still here? Do you, do you want to learn how to crochet or it's just something you're not interested in? Stacey said you are increasing by one inch each chain. Oh, okay. Thanks, Stace. Of course, I don't know if I should have marked the beginning of the row. Now, this is so thick, um, I'm thinking I need it to be bigger around the bottom. Nothing like a round bottom. Yes, because you're essentially crocheting. Yeah. Just crocheting around another fiber. I wanted to try the rope too. Now that I got a piece of the, you want a piece of me? I got a piece of the uh, yarn. 
this is really of course i don't save the labels for every I save everything else but i don't save the labels for stuff which is something like this and I, now i wish i now i wish i had kept the label so i knew what the heck it really is Maybe I only need to do one here. Stacy said, when you get to your width, I'd slip into first, then single crochet, chain, single crochet, same number, chain, after the same, next stitches, the same amount in rounds. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm catching that, Stace. When you get to your width, I'd slip into the first, then single crochet, chain, single crochet, same with no chain after, then single crochet, chain, single crochet, next. So stitches remain the same amount in your rounds. Oh, okay. I think I got you now. So that I'm not e increasing. So I'm just, I, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I could just maybe, well, I probably need that extra because it's wide, huh? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, that's the thing. Like if you're working, if for me anyway, if, if I'm working with a video and trying to follow along, I can watch and they're talking to me. It's one thing. But if I've got to watch and read words. Girlfriend, I'm lost. Whew. I got to watch and watch and watch. Okay. So let's just say. Keep catching that fiber. It does look kind of cool though, right? I mean, I think it looks cool. It's different. And it is easier on the hand. My crocheted basket that I did, boy, that really, that really, um, was not easy on my hand of course i guess when i'm doing this and i don't really know what i'm doing and i'm learning uh i, I grip it i grip my my needle a little more than i probably need to okay so this doesn't have to be huge i think i'm at the place where maybe i can get try to get the size to come up all right so stacy's saying i don't want to continue to do the increases because now i just want the sides to come up if i'm understanding correctly so she said maybe slip into the first stitch so go into the bridge and just slip stitch there and then she's saying hey kathy whitney how are you this evening and then single crochet chain single crochet in the same no chain after all right so i'm going to start leaning my fat my um yarn instead of on the outside edge i'm going to kind of sit it on top and i'm going to go back under 
and Stace recommends a single crochet. And I think she means a chain and then a single crochet, which I don't know that that's what Ver Ver Varna did, but that doesn't matter. She's, and then go back down under that bridge, the next stitch, bring it up. And I think I can just really, should be able to just single crochet around, right? And I'm leaning it towards the center, but I want to attach it. <clears throat> so I've got to grab that bridge underneath. And I'm still working as tight as I can work. I slip, single crochet, same as slip, skip, next chain, go into the following chain. I don't know if I'm getting it. I'm, I might have to think on that. <clears throat> like when you're, when I did the crocheted basket, the gray one that I showed you earlier. Once I got my side to come up, which wasn't hard at all, I just kept um, see, I don't want to increase at all. I just want the side to come up. In the side side. Okay, Ange said, I got something that I don't know what it is. And I pay, oh, Ange, that happens to me all the time. That's why they say write it down. I never write it down. Kathy uh, Whitney said, I would think just like in making crochet baskets, you do a single in every stitch around without putting two stitches in the same, right, right, yeah. And it starts bringing up the side. Okay. Without having to lean it, you're saying, Kath? See, this is starting to come up a little bit. Ooh, this is getting exciting now. Hot dog, hot dog. Ooh, I could go for a hot dog. Hot dog, hot dog. Nothing like learning how to do something with an audience, right? But hey, if I can figure it out and I can do it, you guys could do it. You know, if you wanna, if you, if you, if you, if, if you wanna. See, now I got a little bit of a bumpity bumps. Got some bumpity bumps happening there. See, look, I'm starting to get a little, can you see? All right, let me see if I can speed this up. You're just guessing though. Ah, you know, you got it going on. You know, it's, you're right, you're right. I never made a basket like that. It's looking really cool. Oh, thanks, Kathy. I think you're doing great. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you so much. I build up these. The second chain creates another area to stitch. You have to admit it. I never did look for my phone. My phone keeps buzzing. I should probably see if it's my son. Hold on. Or if it's something that needs to be. Uh, every time I come out here and I say, okay, you're going to put your phone here so you can find it. And then I, I just, I can't find where I put it. 
Well, I guess if it's an emergency, they would call the house. Oh, there it goes. I gave it a, I gave it a push. It, it slipped behind here. Oh, it's just uh, okay. It's the uh, it's the merry group. Those girls are chatting. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, good. Okay, fine. All right, let's see here. Now, when I was thinking, if I did the rope. Since I just got those tatting threads, I've got a lot of burgundy. It might be cool to do burgundy on the rope. Stace, I don't know if I'm doing what you told me to do, but I hope you're not frustrated or screaming in your head. Why doesn't she listen? It takes me a while. I have to read something over and over several times before I get it. I'm not quick on the on the reading instructions and getting it right away. Sorry. It's just it's just how my brain works. Okay, so one of the gifts that we gave our grandson was a watch. It's not a smart watch. It's not a dumb watch, but it's not a smart watch. It's a watch that does different things. Like you can play games. It has a flashlight. There's an alarm clock. Uh, you can take picture of yourself. You can do a little video. You can listen to music. It's not connected to a phone or anything. You know, it's not smart like that. But we felt like our granddaughter would enjoy that, too. And her birthday is next month. And I just thought she would be sad while her brother's fiddling around, you know, with a watch. And she didn't have one. And I'd give her one next month. So we gave her, she'll be eight next month. So we gave her her watch early. Well... Jack looked at it a little bit, put it down, and started playing with his transformer and his tr monster trucks and other stuff. You know, not not even all birthday stuff. He just he was playing with other toys, which is fine. And I asked my sisters, out of all the things that the watch did, okay, listen to music, play games, flashlight, alarm clock, pedometer. Oh, what else did it do? What else? I make a little recording. Take a like. What would we think this eight-year-old kid would be most attracted to on this phone? I mean, this watch. The pedometer. She's obsessed with the pedometer and counting her steps. She cracks us up. She loves numbers, loves math, loves statistical stuff. Okay, she's going to be eight. That's what my, that girls, that's what my sisters guessed, the flashlight. Yeah, no, the pedometer. Okay. She's too funny. Every couple of minutes. Oh my, look, I now have 800 steps. Of course, we don't think it was accurate, but. Kid was having a blast watch, watching her steps. <sighs> They're a hoot. They're a hoot. She got her one grandfather to give her money. If I get so many steps done, he said, I'll give you a dollar if you get to this. So I forget what, what how many steps she had to get to. So she was, she, she had her dollar. She was putting money in her little bank.
Kelly Ann says, I'm over here giggling to myself because I'm trying to count my single crochet strips and you are counting. Oh, <laughs> and I have to keep starting. <laughs> yeah, when they were younger, of course, you know, and it could be that she didn't discover the flashlight on it yet. She got sucked in, sucked in by the uh, pedometer that, and of course it was daylight, so. We'll see. Wanted to kind of, yeah, everybody's, uh, looks like my numbers are going down here. This is getting kind of boring. I know there's other, there are other folks on too, but I do want to do the napkin giveaway before everybody disappears. I don't know if I have a mod left. I don't think I do, unless I have a mod that's lurking. See now, see how it's like, and it doesn't matter because that kind of looks cool. But see, this is like uh, love handles here. So I guess I need to have my stitches closer together. Yeah, they are, Kathy. They're starting to come up a little bit. But I'm kind of racing around here trying to, let's see. Yeah. I just don't want to increase, you know, to make it wonky. All right, so. And then Marina just goes and she, um, Just take some extra thread and stitches it down. Yeah, I like it. It's rope or a rug yarn that you, yeah, something like that, Teresa. I don't have the label. Yeah, because it's wrong. That's why it's poking out. So I don't have my stitches close together. So, I mean, I can pull that all out, but I was going to also say with the rope, oh, Stacey, I finally get what you're saying, light bulb moment. Oh, I wish I could get a light bulb moment. Yeah, without the punctuation, Lori's having a hard time figuring out what she was trying to tell me now this has t a little bit of tape on the end of my um it's going to narrow because i'm pulling it in that way okay i can work on that tomorrow i want to see what this would look like with the um this burgundy. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to get this. I'm just going to have at it. Stacey said, go back to where you left off doing the bottom. Okay. All right, I'm just curious to see how hard this will be. See, when I put this through the fabric, the one thing I thought if I pulled it too hard, it would pull right through the end of the fabric.
All right, now I'm thinking this might be a little easier because the rope is more solid than the um, fluffy yarn. Fluffy. Fluffy. Curiosity killed the cat. Um, Kelly said, I've been on my phone all day, going to go watch a movie and crochet some more. Okay, sweetie. Are you going to snuggle with Ganache? Have a good night. Yeah, I appreciate it, Stacey. I'm just, like, I, I have issues with, um, it, it's me, it's not you issues with uh uh what do you what do you call it um see i can't even think of the word comprehension okay so now that's not tight enough i hope i'm not frustrating you All right, so now I'm going to come under. Well, this will look cool. See, it's hard getting under there and getting, because the rope in the that yarn I was using is fat. Oh. Candy. Sorry, I hope it doesn't last too long. Okay, Kath is going to go start dinner. All right, good night. Maybe I should quickly do that and mess with this on my own. That looks cool. Okay, one, two, three, four. This looks better than the other one. Of course, hopefully you do get better. I might fiddle with this a little bit when I'm sitting in my comfy chair. Ooh, ooh. It didn't. Um... Oh, stink. All right, so I've got those napkins that I want to share. And, oh, <laughs> thanks, Stacy. All right, one, two, three, four, five. And this six is what I need. Now I have to try to coil this in. All right, so let's do the napkin thing. Come down to 11 folks here. So if you're interested in this little napkin package, I will take them apart so it's just the thin part. It won't be much. It'll just come in a little envelope. I won't, won't have any tracking or anything with it, okay? So if you're interested in these napkins, let's see. There's only uh, 11 up. Let's So let's do 1 to 25. Uh, for a number, I'm going to put in a little go. So you can pop in your number and uh, I'll find my phone again. Phone again, phone again. Oh, there's Susan. Hi, Susan. And I'm going to go out to the internet. And I'm going to go to random.org. And I said 25, 1 to 25. 
So pop in your numbers, please. Anyone that might like to get it. Sharon, did you put in a new number? It's one to 25, my dear. So well, we can ignore her number 35 and get you another number. Okay, Sharon, can you pop in another? There you go. Good. Good job. Good job. Where's uh where's um Ange, Ange, are you still here? You want in on the nappies? And it will be, hey, there's Judy. Hi, Judy. Yes, you can say seven for Kathy Whitney. Does anybody want to put a number in for Kellyanne? Kellyanne was here. That's fine with me. Hi, Judy. I don't want to put in a number for somebody because I'm the one drawing the number. That might not that might not be too too swell. And um, if somebody, oh, thank you, Joyce. Nineteen for candy. I was just going to say candy. Janice, um, Sharon has twelve. You want to pop in a different number for Kellyanne? A Cal for fourteen. Okay, fourteen for Cal. All right. I'm going to say stop. There's not that many of us. So let's see what happens here. Stop. I didn't get my P in my stop. Okay. So be the first number without going over. This is how I like to do it. And here's the generator. Oh, my camera's clearing up pretty well tonight. So let's go. Number 14. Looks like that's our Kelly. Yeah, Kelly. Yeah. Right? We got 35, 3, 24, 8, 22, 12, 7, 12, which that was already taken. 19 for candy. So that'll go to Kelly Ann. I'll message her and get her address. All right. So that'll be it for me. Thanks for um, humoring me this evening and my attempt to, I am intrigued with this. <clears throat> and um, so I think I'm going to take this to my comfy chair and see if I can get this. And then maybe what Stacy was trying to tell me will um, kick in. <laughs> uh, uh. All right, ladies, thanks for being here. Appreciate you joining me this evening. Have a great week. Uh, I hope to see you again on Thursday morning. Uh, and um, Gosh, I can't believe. I can't believe we're into April. I can't believe my grandson's five. I can't believe I keep embarrassing myself on my channel. Oh, well. Life. I hope it turns out. Stacey said, look up the V stitch. I, I know that when you knit and all, it makes a V. And I see the, I see the V there. But I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing with the V-stitch for an Afghan. All right, Stace, I'll do it. Thanks for trying to help me. Sorry to be so thick. <laughs> All right, ladies, have a good evening. Don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. I'll see you soon. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.